So we wrapped up a series on Genesis this past weekend by looking at the character of Abraham. And Abraham is a fascinating character. There are moments where he exhibits all the right qualities. He, exhi- he does all the right things. And that's how we're introduced to him in Genesis chapter 12. God calls him and he gets up and he doesn't know where he's going. He obeys. He's this man of faith. And then we've got to be honest, right? He has his history of his life recorded from age 75 to the end of his life. And boy, he, he drops the ball. There's many times where he doesn't make the right decision. He lies about his wife, Sarah. His most important human relationship, his wife, he lies about her. He says, she's my sister. He does that two separate times. He takes God's promise that he's going to have a child, a son, one day, and he doesn't believe it. And he begins to take matters into his own hands, and he sleeps with his maidservant, Hagar. There's other moments in his life where we're reading the story, right? Very sobering if we were to have our whole life written in Scripture for people to study for their entire life. That's sobering. What's happened to Abraham? And so he, he makes some poor decisions. And I read those decisions and I read the story of his life and I'm so encouraged because in Hebrews 11, it says, verse 8, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land. And it talks about Abraham and, and he lands in the hall of fame of faith. How can that be? How can this man make such poor decisions but also be a man of faith? Listen, it's not about our faith. It's not about the amount of your faith. It's not about the amount of my faith. It's about, listen, this is really important. It's about the object of our faith. The object of our faith is what gives us righteousness. Who's the object of our faith? For us, it's Jesus is the object of our faith. It's not the amount of our faith. That goes contrary to some teaching that says you've got to have more faith. Build up your faith. Have more faith. Have greater faith. No, Jesus says just the faith of a mustard seed is all you need. It's not about the amount of your faith. It's about the object of your faith. And when we place our faith in God, all things are possible. The impossible becomes possible. And that was, that was true for Abraham. It says in scripture it was it was Abraham was good as dead when the call of God came upon his life there's another passage in the book of James that you may not be familiar with I it's not a passage that's referenced very often it's James chapter 2 I'm so encouraged by this passage and I hope you are too James 2 verse 23 Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, you and I, we're we're not Jews, we're Gentiles. We've been grafted into the family of Abraham. And we've been what's we've been called righteous because of the work of Jesus on the cross. He looks at you today, and I don't know, I don't know if today is your very best day or your very worst day. But God views you the same on your worst day or your best day. If it's a good day, he views you the same as it's your very worst day. As if you've made some really poor decisions. Through Jesus, he declares you good and right. Now listen to this. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. The only where in the Bible that someone is called a friend of God. A, a, someone who lied, someone who slept with an individual other than his wife, and the list goes on and on and on. It wasn't just on his best days that he was called a friend of God. It says Abraham was called a friend of God. I'm so encouraged by that today. Some of us are sitting here and we might not think of any friends. I hear Christians say, well, I don't have any friends. Listen, you, your first Your first friend is the creator of the universe. You are a friend of God in Jesus, okay? God's friend, powerful term today, a powerful picture. If you're feeling alone, 
God is your friend. God is on your side. God is faithful. He will not abandon you. You can tell him anything. He is not the friend that will walk away. He is not the friend that will judge you. God is a good friend. And we see Abraham called a friend of God. And because of Jesus, you and I can be called a friend of God as well. Let me pray. Thank you, God, for the encouragement you give us. As a reminder, it is not about our behavior. It's not about the choices that we've made, good or bad, that's led us up to this point in life. It is about simple faith in Jesus. And as a result, it's credited to us as righteousness. I thank you for that. May, that, may you remind us of that every day. We have a friend in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This week we start a new series on the book of Acts. Look forward to starting that with you this Sunday. The book of Acts, Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. I'll see you there.